Dear colleagues, this is a corneal topography assisted cataract surgery. When there is high astigmatism, we should place the main incision on the steep axis and make a full thickness limbal incision 180 degree away. This patient has very high astigmatism and the steep axis is at 177 degree. So the main incision is at 9 o'clock. And now this is a very small side port so that this effect of this main incision is not neutralized by the side port. I want to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye and here goes the tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. And now the dye is to be washed out with the help of BSS I wash the dye out of the anterior chamber in a very short time we are going to see the corneal topography readings here it is you can see this patient has astigmatism of 4.5 3.5 diopter and these are the K readings the steep axis is KS is at 177 degree so the main incision is at 9 o'clock and I have planned to put clear full thickness incision at the opposite limbus Viscoelastic substance has been injected into the antechamber. Now, capsulorexis. The anti-capsule is incised, the flap is raised. I hold this flap with uterta forceps. My natural movement is to go anticlockwise. If you are comfortable with clockwise movement, please continue that. So, with anti-clockwise movement, a CCC is done. Now, hydrodissection. This is a genular cataract, dense nuclear opacification at the center. This is hydrodissection. Now, the nucleus is tapped and the nucleus is rotated. And now, the machine being used for fecal emulsification is Oatly Cataryx 3. It's a mid range machine. The tip is being introduced, and in this case, I'm going to do direct job. After cleaning the superficial cortex, I bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus. Hold the central hard nucleus and chop it. Now each hemineucleus is tilted and it is emulsified and removed. Followability of nuclear pieces can be increased by turning the bevel towards the nuclear mass. Yes, nucleus is managed and now little bit of viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber. This is a piece of epinucleus which is sticking to the corneal endothelium. And now I'm using a 23 gauze Simco cannula just like you use a coaxial IA. I am not using the side port through the main port with the help of this very simple instrument. You can clean the cortex and for every case you can afford to have a new Simco. 
And now viscoelastic substance is injected into the antechamber. And now a foldable intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular bag. Before that, I'm going to make this full thickness limbal incision 180 degree away from the main incision after injecting viscoelastic substance. Here it is. So this is a full thickness 2.8 millimeter incision. This combined with the main incision which will be enlarged further will reduce the astigmatism a lot. Now here is the intraocular lens. The lens goes in the capsular bag. The left hand instrument helps the lens to settle in the capsular bag. A Sinsky hook is taken and the lens is dialed in such a way that you can go behind the eye wheel to clean the capsular bag. lot of visco is there in the capsular bag that must be cleaned out. This is enlargement of the main incision to about 3.5 to 4 millimeter because there is lot of astigmatism. Astigmatism is 4.34 diopter. The nucleus that was there sticking to the corneal endothelium has come out I irrigated some BSS towards the epinuclear piece. It got it. It got dislodged and it out. And now, lot of visco has been removed by the Simco itself. And now I am going to use the. irrigating probe. At this time you will be able to see LIDRS lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. See here the pupil is becoming a large and small. Here it is small and when irrigation uh, aspiration is not done it is enlarged like this. This is because of LIDRS, lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. If the patient is under topical anesthesia, it causes some pain to the patient. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. Since the incisions are made with keratome, these incisions doesn't need hydration. And the main and the side port incision was very small and it has been used only for the chopper. So the side port also doesn't need hydration. That's it. The case is done. Just form the anterior chamber and then must check whether all the wounds are intact or not, all the, uh, if, if there is any leakage or not, and then we conclude the case. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Thank you very much.